It's the International Soccer Preview and we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 28, looking at the groups and teams of the 2024 Copa America. This episode is looking at the players of Chile. Here we go! Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Top Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 28 on the players of the 2024 Copa America. This episode covers Chile's players. Uh, we're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one here is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. So we examine the participation of players in games over the recent period, and uh, we do take a couple of other factors into account and categorize them into one of six categories, uh, definitely, likely, possible, and so on. Uh, part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. At that time, we'll go back over the list that we create here and uh, see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover a couple of other things like injuries and surprise selections. So this episode will have three sections. Section one, where we look at some general information on the team. Section two, the main part where we look at the candidates, uh, give some information on the main candidates um, uh, position by position and uh, judge their likelihood of making the final squad. And section three, where we summarize and uh, conclude. So let's begin with section one, uh, some general information on the squad. Okay, um, we begin with uh, uh, kind of big players that are no longer on the team or are retired. And uh, honestly, for Chile, we would have had some big names here. But the new manager has brought several of the biggest names back in from the cold, <laughs> from the wilderness. So uh, we'll see who they are uh, when we go through the players. So really, no, uh, no big names to announce here. Um, and so we move on to the next section, which is a kind of an impression of the club affiliation of uh, Chilean players. So a few of them do uh, come over and play in Europe. Um, we have um, uh, a couple of the biggest players, Alexis Sanchez, uh, still with International uh, or Inter Milan uh, in Italy. And uh, we have Victor Davila with uh, Seska Moscow in Russia. Claudio Bravo is playing for Real Betis in Spain and Guillermo Marapan uh, with Monaco. Uh, those are the biggest clubs and there are some with uh, some some uh, kind of smaller clubs in Europe like Norwich, Mittyland in, um, uh, in uh, Denmark there and um, uh, a few like that, uh, but not that many of them actually come over to Europe and uh, it seems kind of the first step uh, for Chilean players is playing in uh, Argentina or Brazil. So we do have some, uh, even with some of the biggest clubs in Argentina like River Plate uh, and Independiente and with some big clubs in Mexico like, oh sorry, in um, Brazil like Flamengo and Atletico Mineiro. Eduardo Vargas now playing uh, for uh, uh, Atletico Mineiro and Eric Pulgar with Flamengo. Those are some of the bigger names on the squads. And uh, a few even playing in Mexico there, but I would say about a third of them, a third to a half of them play in uh, Chile. And the, the biggest Chilean club probably there, Colo Colo, uh, or uh, one of the Universidad um, uh, teams, uh, um, are the biggest ones uh, in Mexico, uh, sorry, in uh, Chile. Okay, that's kind of an impression uh, of the teams. And um, let's move on to uh, recent games. So um, really since the beginning of 2023, that's the period we're looking at. And uh, Chile played uh, 12 games. It's a bit messy at the beginning because the first two were friendlies and boy, did they ever... Uh, experiment uh, over the first four games we really see uh, we really see like different players uh, coming out of the woodwork uh, for that one but by the time we get to the fourth game um, or maybe it's yes the fifth game uh, World Cup qualifying for 2026 uh, begins so things uh, begin to settle down a little bit not that much though because uh, they are 
going through uh, manager problems at that point, and we'll talk about that when we look at the managers. Uh, the other thing we look at in games is uh, is their participation in international tournaments. I'm going to do it a little bit different for Chile here because uh, it's a bit of a special circumstance. So uh, in our history, we really uh, want to go back just two tournaments uh, so that we don't get too much into the weeds with history. But because some of the uh, veterans are coming back, I do want to tell you uh, the history that they're coming from. So uh, they ha had a golden generation, which really um, started to kick off in 2010 with a round of 16 finish in the World Cup. Uh, Chile, normally a team that does well just to make the World Cup. And they repeated that in 2014. But the real glory came in 2015 and 2016, where they won two Copa Americas in a row. Um, after that, they didn't make the 2018 World Cup or the 2022 World Cup, uh, which really is more representative of Chile. So uh, that generation was kind of uh, petering out. It was a bit disappointing for them that they didn't make, especially the 2018 World Cup. And then, of course, uh, all of the South American teams make the 2021 Copa America. So we will mention uh, if the players were on that squad. Um, we won't go back into too much detail uh, about the golden generation period, although we will mention uh, those players who were part of it. Uh, okay, that brings us on to formations uh, over the 12 games since the beginning of 2023. That too is a bit of a uh, a bit of a mess, um, but they did begin ironically the most chaotic uh, period with uh, different players being used they used the same formation a 4-2-3-1 in the first three games uh, but then after that it started to go a bit haywire uh, with various formations being used i won't go through them all um, but eventually they did come back to the 4-2-3-1 and perhaps most significantly uh, the manager who came in in January seems to have tried to really stabilize things. So he went back to the 4-2-3-1 formation and used uh, both them and kind of uh, stable players uh, for the two games in March 2024. So overall we have their usual formation uh, or, uh, of 4-2-3-1 uh, used in 58% of games. Um, I think, oops, I think that is seven of the 12 games. And uh, among the other seven, only one formation was used more than once. So we won't go into the uh, the painful details of that. Uh, okay, let's find, uh, finish this part with a look at their upcoming games. So most teams have two friendly scheduled. I suppose there's still time for uh, Chile to schedule another one, although the hour is getting late. Uh, uh, the one they do have scheduled is Chile versus uh, Paraguay. And I forgot to check whether that was uh, um, happening in the United States where the tournament is being held or whether uh, uh, um, that is at home as the, uh, as the graphic suggests here. Uh, but I am just uh, checking it as I talk, and I see that that is um, taking place in Chile. So that's a home game for Chile in Santiago. Okay, that's the end of the first section. Let's move on to the second section, and uh, we'll begin talking about the candidates, beginning with the manager situation. So uh, a bit of chaos here which then uh, flows down to a bit of chaos on the on the team selection. Um, the result being, uh, okay, well, I'll tell you that at the end. Okay, so we have uh, uh, the, the narrative we'll start, uh, we'll say begins with Martin Lasarte, or Martin Lasarte, who uh, was manager of Chile during the 2021 uh, Copa America. Uh, but in 2022, and we'll give the, a fuller narrative right away here, uh, the manager became uh, Eduardo uh, Barizo. Um, sorry, I'm, I just have to uh, uh, fix a couple of things there. Eduardo Barizo taking over in 2022 
and he uh, left in uh, November 2023. There was actually a caretaker manager for a month or two who we won't talk about, but they finally landed on Ricardo Gareca, uh, who is their current manager now. So I'll just uh, put those ones in light gray to, to show that they're no longer the manager. And uh, I'll give a little bio on Ricardo Gareca before I uh, uh, kind of summarize the situation. So uh, Ricardo Gareca, manager of Chile since uh, 2024, and uh, he also managed the Peru national team from 2015 uh, to 2022. Um, those are his only international uh, uh, teams. He, he managed Peru through four tournaments uh, there and uh, managed uh, several teams, mostly in Argentina. He is Argentinian, um, mostly in Argentina, but also in uh, Peru. And uh, let me see, are there any other countries? No, they're, they're pretty much in Argentina. Um, for Ricardo Gareca. So, uh, as a player, he actually was uh, a top forward in Argentina, playing for the top clubs in the country, but not selected for the 1986 World Cup because uh, they had a lot of good forwards. Uh, Diego Maradona coming to mind uh, there. Oh, actually, he did participate in the Copa America in 1983. So, um, uh, was with the Argentina team from 1981 to 85 with 24 caps and four goals, Ricardo Gareca. Uh, okay, that's his bio. Now let's summarize the situation. So I'll repeat uh, some of the things I said. Uh, La Salte was manager for uh, the 2021 Copa America. Um, one account I read said it was his decision to leave in April 2022, another saying that he was dismissed after failing to qualify for the World Cup. They finished seventh in that big South American group with uh, only the top five ad advancing. So, um, you know, still, uh, still kind of high on the success they had earlier in the decade. Uh, they viewed that as disappointing, although pretty similar to the result they had had in 2018. Anyway, whether he left of his own accord or was dismissed, uh, Barizo took over the following month in May 2022. And uh, Barizo had a terrible time of it. He went seven games without a win. And then uh, a poor start to the 2026 World Cup qualifying. Uh, it saw them in um, eighth place after five games. So those were in the fall of 2023. He resigned in November and uh, a caretaker manager took over until Gareca was hired in January of 2024. So that's the situation with managers. And I want to talk about one result of all of this. Uh, one result is the stunning amount of players coming in and out of the squad uh, over the period. Uh, I guess the period we're looking at uh, begins under Barizo and uh, uh, at the end finishes with Gareca's two March 2024 games. So things seem pretty chaotic under Barizo, uh, as you'll see with the sheer number of players that we have to uh, talk about here. And because we have so many, uh, I may actually um, scan, uh, scant on the details uh, of the less likely players a little bit. Anyway, this new manager, Gareco, seems to have tried to settle things down. Uh, uh, one thing he's done is to bring back some of those veterans from their glory years uh, and installing them into the squad. And uh, it looks like, in general, he's trying to create a consistent lineup. So uh, there seemed a definite uh, effort to use the same players in both of those March games. Uh, in 2024 rather than mixing and matching. But you will see as we go through. So let's move on to goalkeepers. And uh, we begin with uh, a definite candidate in Brian Cortez. And uh, a likely candidate in Claudio Bravo. We'll give the reason why he's only at the likely level uh, when we get into it. We also have a likely candidate in Gabriel Arias. We have a possible candidate in Fernando de Paul. And then uh, two candidates who seem to be off the squad. So we'll actually uh, deal with them right now. The first one is Cristobal Campos. I believe he uh, uh, 
um, started a game early in 2023. Um, but that was it. He was on the bench for the next four and not selected for the last six matches. So um, uh, not a candidate here. The other one is uh, Ugo Araya. And he got his first appearance on the bench in June of 2023. He didn't start any games, but he was on the bench for one and then not selected for the next 10 matches. So very brief encounter with the national team for uh, Ugo Araya. Uh, let's look at the candidates. Um, people may be surprised to see Brian uh, or Brian Cortez as the top candidate or most likely candidate here. He's 29 years old and has been with Chile since 2018 with 15 caps and no goals. He plays for Colo Colo in Chile and he was on the uh, 2019 Copa America squad as the backup, one of the backup keepers, but not selected for Copa America in 2021. However, uh, since the beginning of 2023, he started seven of their 12 games and was on the bench for nine others. So always selected and uh, starting some of them. Next, we have Claudio Bravo, who is the captain and he um, uh, is 41 years old now, and he's been with Chile since 2004, and uh, with 147 caps, holy cow. Uh, he's with Real Betis in Spain since 2020, and he was with Manchester City in England and Barcelona before that. So a very storied keeper is Claudio Bravo. Uh, on tournaments since the 2020, oh, sorry, the 2004 uh, Copa America, uh, the only one he wasn't selected for was the 2019 uh, Copa America. I'm not sure why. Uh, actually, he had been off the team for, for um, uh, a couple of years before that. Anyway, he came back in, in 2021 and was the captain and starter for that tournament. Um, over the past uh, year and a bit, the period we're looking at from the start of 2023, he started three, including the last two of their 12 games. And uh, he was injured for two, but not called up for seven others. And I'll explain that now. Uh, he wasn't called up because he declined a call up for a friendly. I'm guessing this was uh, a friendly against Cuba in June of 2023. And uh, whether it's a new manager coming in or whether it's the FA that he patched things up with, uh, they did resolve the problem. And uh, he came back in March of 2024 and started both of those games. So uh, Claudio Bravo um, uh, looking like he could be the starter now. We're not really sure, but uh, that's what it looks like. Anyway, we'll summarize the situation a bit later. Uh, next, we have a likely candidate in Gabriel Arias. He's 36 years old and uh, uh, since 2018 has just 15 caps. So kind of hard for these goalies to get ahead of Bravo in the pecking order. Um, he plays for Racing Club in Argentina since 2018, and he was born in Argentina. Uh, he was actually a starter in the 2019 Copa America, so did get some games ahead of uh, uh, Claudio Bravo there. And um, uh, was uh, not oh, and was a backup keeper for the 2021 uh, Copa America on the bench there. So. Um, he had been injured for the first part of uh, 2022, so uh, came back from that injury and started one of their, their 12 games from 2023 and was on the bench for 10 and uh, uh, one match that he wasn't selected for. So uh, he looks like a fairly solid uh, backup keeper or a fairly solid bid for backup keeper, but perhaps a challenge from our possible candidate, uh, Fernando de Paul. Uh, Fernando de Paul uh, also came back uh, from an absence. He came back um, from a 16-month absence in October 2022 and was on the bench for four games, but not selected for the last two matches. But alas, it really does look like, uh, now that I'm talking about it, that he kind of came in uh, during Bravo's absence. And uh, once Bravo came back, he was the player um, kind of sacrificed. So... Uh, in a summary of the position, 
Uh, Bravo and Brayan were actually exchanging starts going into 2023, but as we saw in June, Bravo was not selected uh, after declining a call up for a friendly. Uh, it was very unsettled uh, in June with Campos, Arias and Cortez each starting one of their three June games. But with the start of World Cup qualifying in September, they settled on Cortez for the position and he played all World Cup qualifying games. Um, and then we saw Bravo came back uh, to patch up the argument in time for the last two games in March of 2024. So uh, Bravo um, uh, back on the team. Uh, okay. Let's move on to our next section, uh, Defenders. And uh, I, I just wanted to kind of confirm that uh, um, what I was thinking, that the fall games, the fall 2023 games, were all uh, World Cup qualifying games. However, the, uh, the two games in March of 2024 were friendlies, uh, just as the uh, three games in June of 2023 uh, were friendly so that just or uh, and also the march game in 2023 so um the fact that the players rotated quite a bit is not as surprising in that light uh, because they generally rotate more for friendlies than they do for competitive games okay let's move on to uh, central defenders here and um take a look at the candidates we have we have no uh, definite candidates but we do have uh, Paulo Diaz as a likely candidate, and Guillermo Marapan uh, also likely. Uh, Gary Medell, um, the third uh, likely candidate, and a fourth one even with uh, Matthias Catalan, uh, all four of those likely candidates. And then we have uh, one possible, oh, yes, possible candidate, that is Igor uh, Lichnovsky. And then we have three players who seem to be off the squad. So we'll talk about them as we go through and then uh, won't talk about them later. So uh, Francisco Ciaralta was actually selected for the uh, 2021 Copa America squad, um, but um, was off the team for 16 months. Uh, he came back in March of 2024. So under the new manager, he came back, but he didn't start either of the games. Uh, uh, he uh, subbed in for one and was not selected for the last match. And I'm actually going to change him uh, to possible here because uh, um, that that's really... Uh, what what that description should be if he was selected uh, in March of 2024. Okay, so that means um, Jonathan v uh, Villagra is a possible, our first possible but unlikely candidate. And um, uh, he hasn't started any games. He also, uh, oh, he got his first appearance in November 2023 and uh, didn't start any games, but he was on the bench for one. However, he was not selected under the new manager for the last two matches, so we think he'll be unlikely. Uh, Matthias uh, Zaldivia, um, also uh, a newcomer, got his first cap in June of 2023 and actually did start a game, uh, the first game that he was in for there in June, uh, but he was on the bench for three, then not selected, uh, and not selected for seven others. But all, uh, also two, the two matches under the new manager, he was not selected for. So Matthias uh, Zaldivia, uh, also possible but unlikely. And then we have uh, three players who are off the squad: uh, Benjamin Kusevich. Uh, Benjamin Kusevich was not selected for the last six matches. So seems to be off the squad. We'll give more details uh, if he makes the final squad there. And uh, a veteran, um, kind of a veteran, Enzo Rocco. He does have 33 caps for the national team and um, was part of the Copa America 2011, uh, sorry, 2021 squad, also part of the Scopa Centenario 2016 squad, uh, but he hasn't appeared for the national team since March of 2022. Uh, he's also uh, got an injury 
uh, from mid-May and an unknown return date, so uh, making him that much less likely. Finally, uh, Sebastian Vegas, he was selected for the 2021 Copa America. That's his first uh, uh, tournament for the national team, even though uh, he kind of been around since uh, uh, the 2015. My first note on him is for the uh, 2015 Copa America. Uh, he also last appeared for the national team in March of 2022, uh, so um, not a candidate. Both of those players still are playing club soccer. Anyway, let's go back and look at the candidates that we uh, uh, do expect to see at the Cup. And the first one is Paolo Diaz. He's 29 years old and he has been with Chile since 2015. Uh, 45 caps and one goal and he plays for River Plate in Argentina. And he was uh, part of the Copa America squad uh, in 2019, but not in uh, 2021. In 2021, a heart condition prevented Paolo Diaz from being selected for the team. Obviously, he has uh, um, dealt with that and is back playing. And he started seven of their 12 games, including the last six. So uh, looking quite positive for uh, Paolo Diaz uh, here, but not quite enough to make him a definite candidate. Next, we have Guillermo Marapan, and he uh, is, has 46 caps for the national team and two goals. Uh, was part of the Copa America in 2021, a starter in fact. And like Diaz, he started seven of their 12 games over the period. Uh, however, uh, Marapan is out with a hamstring injury since mid-May, so he's a risk uh, to not make it for the squad, uh, although he is expected to return on May 31st uh, or, or before the tournament. So perhaps we can update in part two. Maybe I, I often find that these uh, predictions of returns are uh, a bit hopeful. Of course, they they would like to say he'll be back in, in time for the cup, but it doesn't always turn out that way. Uh, our third of four likely candidates is Gary Medell. Uh, he is one of the uh, kind of golden generation players um, uh, that has been with the team. He's 36 years old, and um, I believe he's still the captain. Uh, I don't have uh, that written down. I know he has been the captain. Um, uh, but I'm not sure if he still is. Um, oh, I think I can actually check. <laughs> I can actually check and see who the captain is. Uh, it is... Uh, no, Claudio Bravo is the captain. I guess Gary Medell um, uh, was the captain in his absence there around 2017 to 19. Okay, uh, Gary Medell is, uh, has... Uh, 161 caps and seven goals since 2007 and actually he played for my uh, kind of boyhood club Cardiff in England we we thought he was a bit of a ruffian uh, until we got him then we appreciated that he was a bit of a ruffian uh, he has played for Sevilla in Spain and Cardiff in the English league and after Cardiff he went to uh, Inter Milan and uh, now he's back in South America with Vasco da Gama uh, in Brazil since 2023. And uh, he was part of the 2021 Copa America. Uh, oh, I was thinking of his red card that he got <laughs> in, a, in a fight with Lionel Messi, but that was in the 2019 Copa America. Uh, but anyway, part of both of those. And uh, uh, since the start of 2023, Gary Medell has started eight of their 12 games. Um, however, he was not selected for the last two matches under the new manager. And that actually kind of goes against the green uh, a little bit because the new manager uh, is kind of bringing back um, uh, that golden generation. On the other hand, Gary Medell uh, never really left the team like some of the other ones uh, had. Okay, so Gary Medell, still we consider him a likely candidate. And finally, we have Matthias Catalan, Catalan and um, uh, he actually is uh, coded as a central defender, but two of his four starts were as a right back. 
and uh, he got his first cap in March of 2023, so right at the beginning of this period. He started four of their remaining 12 games and uh, subbed in for two and was on the bench for three. So just two matches that Catalan was not selected for. Okay, uh, the possible candidates we'll deal with a bit more quickly. Igor Lichnovsky uh, was not part of the um, Copa America in 2021, but was in 2019, uh, actually. Uh, but he only has nine caps for the national team here. And uh, he uh, was off the team for four and a half years when he returned under the new manager in March of 2024 and started both of their remaining games. So uh, Lichnovsky, if we just take the current situation into account, maybe is uh, uh, closer to likely than possible. But maybe we need to look at the uh, June games uh, to see if that is going to stick. And finally, we have uh, Francisco Sierolta, uh, who uh, we did actually talk about, and we moved him from possible but unlikely uh, up to possible. So he was around uh, for the second last game he was on the bench for and not selected for the last match. Okay, I think I just accidentally gave a finger to the camera. I was just scratching my head, though. Um, okay, let's summarize the position. So a bit mad at first. Uh, three different pairings and six different players in the first three games of 2023. Um, we won't go into detail on that. But it did settle into Medell, Gary Medell, and Marapan uh, for the next four games. Uh, Paolo Diaz replaced each of them once towards the end. And for the last two games, the pairing was Diaz and Lichnovsky, who had just uh, come back from an absence. And I should say that uh, Maripan was injured for three of the last five games. So uh, part of the reason uh, he wasn't there. Okay, and then one time they played with a three-man central defense. That was in the third last game. And uh, Catalan, who had... Uh, played a game early on in 2023, got a second start as a central defender in that three-man defense. Okay, so that's the situation. In terms of um, uh, in terms of likelihood, you'd have to give the nod to Diaz and Lichnovsky because it's the new manager's choice, and the new manager is trying to stabilize things. Okay, that was a lot of candidates to deal with. We'll have a few positions like that. Uh, but that was two positions we were dealing with there. We're moving on to left back, which is just one position. So fewer candidates here. We have Gabriel Suazo as a definite candidate. And then Thomas Galdemez as a likely candidate. And uh, we finally have Eugenio Mena as a uh, possible but unlikely uh, candidate. Okay, and those are all we have. So let's go back and look at Gabriel Suazo. Uh, he was born in uh, 1997, so I'm just uh, kind of looking up my chart. Uh, 28 years old. Um, excuse me, I just have to uh, cough here. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, 28 years old and uh, has been with Chile since 2017 with 23 caps and no goals. Uh, Toiseau plays for Toulouse in France since 2023. That was the year he moved over uh, from Colo Colo in Chile. And uh, he was not part of any um, uh, any tournament. In fact, the uh, no, I won't go into detail. So uh, uh, basically was off the team and returned for a four and a half after a four and a half year absence after the uh 2021 copa america uh, since the start of 2023 though suazo had started 11 of their 12 games and was on the bench for one other so really one of the few stable positions uh, on the squad through the changing managers uh there so um 
that's uh, Gabriel Suazo. Uh, his backup is probably Thomas Galdemaz, who is our likely candidate. Uh, he's 25 years old, and he got his first appearance on the bench in September 2023. Uh, didn't start any games, but was uh, on the bench for all eight matches, so including the two under the new manager. And he plays for Godoy Cruz in Argentina, but doesn't have any caps uh, yet. Okay, um, and finally we have one of the veterans from the golden period, Eugenio Mena, and uh, he is uh, um, 36 years old now. Uh, was with the team since 2010 and 72 caps and three goals. Still playing, uh, well, no, not still playing in Chile. He has moved back to Chile to play for Universidad Católica since 2023. Uh, he stayed in South America for his whole career, though, uh, playing in Argentina and Brazil since 2013. So Eugenio Mena um, was not part of the 2019 Copa America, but he was part of the 2021 uh, version and otherwise in all the tournaments from the World Cup in 2014. Uh, Eugenio Mena started one, uh, the second one of their 12 games over this period, and he was on the bench for three, and then he was injured for six and not selected for the last two matches. So it actually looks like this new manager is and uh, not selecting those veterans who were still on the team, uh, but at the same time bringing back uh, veterans who were off the team, as we'll see a bit later. So all in all, we have Eugenio Menia, uh, Eugenio Mena, Menia as a uh, possible but unlikely ca uh, candidate at this point. So let's summarize the position. Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, it's uh, Gabriel Suazo in all games except the second game uh, where Menya replaced him. However, now it looks like Goldemez is a more likely candidate for the backup position. Let's move over to the right backs. And here we have a possible candidate in uh, Mauricio Isla. And, uh, well, actually four possible candidates. The next one is Juan Delgado and uh, Felipe Loyola and Nicolas Fernandez, all four of those at the possible level, but none above that, none at the definite or likely level. Uh, we have a possible but unlikely uh, in uh, Nail uh, Mesatu. And these players I'll deal with as we go and then uh, not talk about them more. Kind of an interesting character is uh, Mesatu. Uh, he played for... Um, Morocco, Belgium, and Chile underage teams and was eligible for all of those uh, countries. He was born in Belgium, uh, but he got his first cap in June of 2022 for uh, Chile. And over the last 12 games, he subbed in for one, was on the bench for three, uh, injured for two, and then not selected for the last uh, uh, four matches. Sorry, he also started two matches near the beginning of the period uh, but the key detail there uh, not selected for the last four including the two under the new manager so um nail mess uh to possible but unlikely uh we have a couple of players who seem to be off the squad uh, the first is Guillermo Soto, actually uh, uh, new to the squad since 2022 with just three caps, uh, but not selected for the last nine matches. And Joaquin Gutierrez, also a newcomer, uh, who popped his head up on the squad um, in June of 2023, but was not selected for the last 10 matches. So uh, we won't spend too much time on them. Rather, we'll go back and look at our... Uh, or four possible candidates, beginning with Mauricio Isla, so another veteran of the um, uh, another veteran of the team uh, in the Golden Generation. He's 35 years old and played since 2008 for Chile with 138 caps and five goals. So a bit older than uh, Menya, who started in the 2014 World Cup. Isla started in the 2020 in the 2010 World Cup. So he was there through it all, all the way, uh, every tournament up until the 2021 Copa America, where he actually was still good enough to be named to the team of the tournament. Um, 
there. I, I didn't completely agree with that, but uh, I wasn't on the voting committee. <laughs> uh, um, but Isla was off the team uh, basically after that and returned uh, after a two-year absence in March 2024 and started both of their games under the new manager. Uh, we'll see a couple of players like this. So uh, one of the golden generation kind of brought back in from the wilderness is Mauricio Isla. And though that's a kind of a short period of analysis uh, for us to go on, it probably raises him slightly above the possible level. Next, let's look at Juan Delgado. Uh, Juan Delgado is uh, 31 years old, been with Chile since 2014, but just 15 caps and uh, not part of the golden generation. He actually wasn't selected for any tournaments. Uh, and in um, uh, 2022, he actually returned after a seven and a half year absence. And uh, he started two of their games um, in uh from the beginning of 2023 was subbed in for four and then injured uh for the last match uh for the last six matches i should say so uh, a bit of a complex character he was initially listed as a forward uh and then listed as a right wing and here we see him playing as a right back so we're not really sure uh, uh what to list him as but um uh he was making good inroads until his injury but that uh hip injury which has gone from october 2023 until uh the present uh might keep him out of the tournament uh he has an unknown return date so uh that's unfortunate because as i say uh things are looking positive for him up until that injury okay uh the third uh, possible candidate is a bit less likely it's uh, philippe loyola and uh he has just three caps since 2023 uh for the national team and um uh he started a couple of games but was not selected for the last two matches there so philippe loyola uh just uh kind of a bit lower uh on the possible scale than than uh, the players we've talked about uh same um uh sorry uh the fourth candidate is nicolas fernandez also new to the team since 2024 uh but kind of the opposite case he got his first cap uh or he got his first cap in March of 2022. He didn't start either of those games, but he was subbed in for both. So actually that gives him, I think, a much better chance than, uh, than Philippe Loyola. So we'll just move him up uh, on the list here, at least to suggest that he has a better chance. So those are our candidates for the uh, right back position. And I'll summarize the position. Uh, of all the positions, this was one of the most unstable on the squad, with seven players in the position uh, over the um, 12 games since the beginning of 2023. And that includes uh, the players we mentioned here, as well as a couple of the uh, central defenders, uh, Paolo Diaz and Catalan. Uh, but it did look like Delgado uh, was uh, starting to seize the spot until his injury. Uh, that left things kind of uncertain. And in the end, the veteran Mauricio Isla was brought in uh, from an absence by the new manager. And he played the two March games in 2024. So because uh, uh, stability is very important for Chile, um, I I'm thinking that he's going to stick with Isla. Um, uh, because it doesn't look like Delgado uh, is going to come back in time. At this point, he would be lacking fitness, uh, so would need to have a few games under his belt to overcome that hip injury. Anyway, that's speculation, but uh, I give Isla the best chance there. Okay, let's move on to the midfield, and we begin with defensive midfielders, and we have um, a definite candidate in... Uh, Echeverra, Rodrigo Echeverria, a possible candidate in uh, Williams Alarcon, and then uh, a whole bunch of players who uh, don't seem likely. So the first is Vincente um, uh, Pizarro, a possible but unlikely candidate, uh, new to the team since 2023, 
uh, but not selected under the new manager. So um, uh, we think that's unlikely because he hasn't built up really anything with the squad that would uh, that would put him in the manager's eyes, really. Uh, or at least that's what we think. Uh, the second possible but unlikely is Al Alfred Canales, uh, also not selected for the last two matches and no caps for the national team. So um, we're guessing that the new manager is not really going to be interested in trying out new players. So we have these play uh, players as portable but unlikely. Uh, we have Cesar Fuentes as a player who is seemingly off the squad. And I won't go into detail because in addition to um, uh, uh, in addition to seeming unlikely, he is also uh, under an injury uh, under an injury uh, concern. So um, we'll just uh, slide over him. Uh, in fact, I'm seeing now he's not expected back until October. So uh, really, no chance of making the squad. Uh, next, uh, we have Claudio ba uh, Baeza. Uh, also um, uh, seemingly off the squad. He was actually selected for the Copa America 2021, but has not been seen uh, even on the bench since March of 2022. So off the team for uh, two years now. Finally, Thomas Alarcon, uh, pretty much the same, selected for Copa America 2021, but uh, not selected since June of 2022. Let's go back and look at the uh, more likely candidates then. Uh, Rodrigo Echeverria is 29 years old, but a latecomer to the team just since 2020 and only nine caps and one goal. Uh, not part of the uh, Copa America 2021 squad, uh, even though he was around at the time. And he returned after more than two and a half year absence uh, in March of 2023 and started eight of their 11 games. Um, so uh, just one match that he wasn't selected for. So Rodrigo Echeverria uh, storming back onto or storming onto the team, really having never uh, gotten his foot in the door before that. Next, we have uh, William Alarcon. And uh, he, I'm forgetting to mention clubs, but um, uh, uh, maybe I'll just say if it's significant. Uh, Echeverria plays in Chile um, and actually is on loan to Spain, uh, uh, to Huracan in Spain. So uh, I should have uh, uh, given his club information. Nevertheless, we are moving on to Williams Alarcon. And he is with Huracan in Argentina. He got his first cap in 2022 and just two caps for the national team uh, and started one of their 12 games over the period, was subbed in for two and on the bench for uh, three. He was out with two separate injuries for the last four matches, but he has recovered uh, from those injuries. But, but um uh, that probably lowers his chances here. So, defensive midfielders uh, then. Uh, but before we talk about the, um, before we summarize the position, we'll look at central midfielders because they overlap. Uh, and so the central midfielders begin with the very versatile uh, Nunes, uh, Marcelino Nunes, as a definite candidate. Uh, we'll talk about why I said that soon. We have a possible candidate in Eric Pulgar. Uh, and uh, also Victor Mendez, a possible candidate. And Charles Aranguis, uh, a, a possible candidate here. Uh, Aranguis, part of the golden generation. Wow, and we have uh, more still. Esteban Pavez, also possible. Um, and uh, Cesar Perez, uh, also possible. I might have made a mistake and said they were likely at some point, but uh, all those, Pulgar, Mendez, Aranguiz, Pavez, and Perez, uh, all possible candidates. Uh, we have one uh, player who seems to be off the squad to deal with, and that is Pablo Galdanez. He was part of the 2021 squad. Um, uh, but has, hasn't uh, uh, played since June of 2022. 
so uh, uh, doesn't uh, look doesn't uh, kind of come into the story here. Okay, let's go back and look at the candidate. Marcelino Nunes uh, is coded as a CD, but uh, a, C a CM, a central midfielder, but is quite versatile. And in this period, actually played as anything but a central midfielder. He was. Um, an, uh, an attacking midfielder and even in one game a forward and at the beginning of the end and at the end I think the two games each he was a defensive midfielder so I guess that's pretty close to a central midfielder uh, Marcelo Nunes, uh, Marcelino Nunes is 24 years old and has been with the team since 2021 but has amassed 23 caps and four goals in that time uh, he was on the Copa America 20, uh, 2021 squad uh, there, but only as a substitute. He, he was on the bench the whole time. Uh, since uh, the beginning of 2023, Nunes has started seven of the 12 games, uh, and he was subbed in for three, uh, suspended uh, for one and not selected for one. So uh, regularly called up, not necessarily uh, a starter, uh, a starter, but when he does start, uh, heavens knows where he will start. One day he'll show up as the goalkeeper, I'm sure. Okay, uh, the first of our five possible candidates is Eric Pulgar. So he is 30 years old, and uh, since 2015 with Chile, he has 47 caps and four goals, and he plays for uh, Flamengo in Brazil since 2022, and was with Flor uh, Fiorentina in Italy, uh, for three years before that, he spent uh, quite a bit of time in Italy since 2015, actually. Uh, and on that note, I forgot to mention that uh, Marcelino Nunes is with Norwich in England since 2022, uh, uh, moving over. That was his first club uh, abroad. Anyway, back to uh, Eric Poulgar. He's recognizable as the player with uh, kind of a tattoo all the way up his neck. And he has been um, uh, in tournaments. Uh, well, I'll just deal with the 2021 Copa America. He was um, uh, selected for that tournament and a starter uh, for the most part there. And since the beginning of 2023, Pulgar has started seven of their 12 games, but he wasn't selected for four, including the last two matches. And again, we think that's a significant detail. So that may move him down the rankings a little bit. Next, we have Victor Mendez. Um, uh, far less experienced than Pulgar, just since 2021 with Chile and 12 caps. And he plays for uh, Seska Moscow, CSKA Moscow in Russia. And that is his first club abroad uh, since 2022. Um, he, uh, since the start of 2023, started four games, subbed in for two and was on the bench for two, but also not selected for the last two matches, uh, Victor Mendes. Charles Aring, uh, uh, Aranguiz, um, uh, I, I have him as an injury concern here, but I, I don't remember seeing that. That must be... Uh, uh, off so it looked like he was out with an ankle sprain um since the uh since this since early april i'm just checking to see whether he has played for his club since um because he's not listed as an injury doubt it looks like he came back on the last day uh, uh on the last day of play and came on as a substitute there. So Charles Aranguiz, we can uh, remove that injury concern. He's 35 years old and uh, was with the team since 2009 with 101 caps and seven goals. Currently playing for Internacional in Brazil, Internacional, uh, since 2023. Uh, that's his uh, third stint with them, actually. And uh, he was with Bayer Leverkusen in Germany for eight years uh, prior to that. So um, uh, he did play uh, a, a lot of experience abroad. Uh, he was with the squad from the 2014 World Cup uh, onwards. So despite uh, um, being with the team since 2009, he didn't make the final cut for the 2010 World Cup, but it's been part of tournaments ever since, including a starter in the 2021 uh, Copa America. 
He was off the team for a little while before that. Uh, he was gone for a year, struggling with two separate injuries, uh, but came back in September 2023 to start uh, two of their remaining eight games. He was subbed in for two and then uh, not selected for the last four matches. I believe his ankle injury happened after the March matches. So, uh, again, yet another of these players uh, not coming in under the new manager. Uh, our fourth candidate, Esteban Pavez, uh, is been with the team since 2014, but just 13 caps there. And he was part of the 2019 Copa America. That was his only tournament. And um, um, he was actually uh, on the uh, bench for the first game in 2023, then off the team for a year, but came back in March of 2024 uh, and was uh, subbed in for both games. So uh, again, under the new manager, and if we uh, if we are giving uh, a stronger chance to the players playing under the new manager, then we would have to uh, move Esteban Pavez uh, up the list. But it really is hard to see um, a player who's uh, really struggled to get into the team being moved ahead of veterans like Pulgar and Aringuez. Uh, Aranguiz, so uh, I'm just going to leave things as they are. Um, finally, we have Cesar Perez, who's just 21 years old and uh, has three caps since 2023, so a newcomer to the team. Uh, however, he um, uh, first appeared on the bench in June of 2023, didn't start any games, but he was subbed in for the last three. So again, a newcomer under the manager, uh, under the new manager, uh, is Cesar Perez. So we really need to look at the June games to see how this is going to shake out, whether he'll go with some of these new players or uh, uh, stick with the veterans. We have seen in some cases that he... Uh, um, yeah, he is favoring the veterans for stability, but then at the same time, we've seen him uh, um, not select veterans and go for young players instead. So very uh, interesting. I think the June games will be important. Anyway, we can now summarize the defensive and central midfielders. We've looked at a lot of candidates there. Um, part of the reason is their formation because they usually have formations that require two defensive midfielders, uh, but there are some formations uh, with uh, just one, and then a couple of formations with three, actually. Um, so again, a bit chaotic at the uh, beginning with five players occupying the two positions over the first three games. Uh, only Rodri, uh, sorry, only, um, Nunes, uh, Marcelino Nunes, was the only one to start twice in those games. And I'm really kind of uh, boiling it down here. Uh, in time, Pulgar became a staple. And uh, increasingly, he was joined by Echeverria there. Uh, then Nunes came back into the position. And in fact, it was all three of them uh, in the 4-3-3 formation of the third last game. That would have been their last game in November. However, in the last two, it was Nunes and Echeverria uh, as the central pairing there with uh, Pulgar uh, not selected. And uh, throughout the whole period, Victor Mendes popped up, uh, popped up here and there. Uh, Victor Mendes... Um, getting four starts over the period. So uh, again, it looks like the manager uh, is trying to settle, thing down, settle things down and has selected Nunes and Echeverria, but we'll have to, uh, have to wait until uh, the June games at least to confirm that. Uh, okay, we have um, the left midfielders and right midfielders, and in fact, they did use this position uh, in the 4-3-3, but we kind of summarized it uh, when we were talking about the central and defensive midfielders, So, um, and also there are no, no real uh, candidates over here, so I'll just quickly mention a couple of 
uh, candidates who might have been. Uh, Oscar Opato uh, was a part of the 2019 Copa America squad, uh, not the 2021, but he was still around and played his last game for the team in June of 2022. So he's a left midfielder who seems to be off the squad. Uh, the other one is Matias Fernandez. Um, not to be confused with the other Matthias Fernandez uh, on Chile, who is now off the team. This one uh, is uh, new to the team since 2023, uh, but just one cap, even though he is 28 years old. Uh, and he uh, uh, he uh, came into the team in October of 2023, was subbed in for one and on the bench for one, and then not selected for the last four matches. So right midfielder, uh, Matthias Fernandez, Matthias Fernandez the second, if you will, uh, a possible but unlikely character, uh, a candidate, I should say. Uh, okay, so we move on to attacking midfield, and we've kind of uh, reorganized this uh, these positions into just a left attacking and right attacking. So uh, this could be anything from a, a left winger to a left attacking midfielder to a left forward in a 4-3-3. Uh, if it's uh, just two forwards, then we would consider it a forward. Uh, and uh, this uh, is usually a left attacking midfielder uh, for Chile uh, because of that 4-2-3-1 formation that they favor. Okay, let's look at the candidates. And we have... Uh, uh, ben Brereton Diaz as a uh, definite candidate. He's actually coded as a forward, but we're moving him uh, here because this is where he primarily uh, plays. Also coded as a forward is our first likely candidate, uh, Victor Davia. And uh, we have another one in Alexander Avarina, uh, sorry, Aravina. And uh, then we have two players who seem to be off the squad. One is uh, Jean Meneses. And he was uh, selected for the um, 2020-21 Cup. He was actually a starter, at least in the first two games there. Um, but the uh, last time he appeared for the national team was right at the beginning of this period in March 2023 on the bench and hasn't appeared since. So Jean Meneses, not a uh, uh, candidate here. Uh, Cesar Pinares is also uh, seemingly off the squad. He was selected also for the 2021 Copa America, just as a substitute, but uh, has not appeared since that tournament. Uh, both of those uh, players still playing club soccer, uh, though. Let's go back and uh, look at the um, likely candidates or the, the more likely candidates more closely, beginning with Ben Burton Diaz. And uh, he is on the, uh, on the roster for Blackburn in England uh, since 2019, but actually was loaned to premier side Sheffield United in England in 2024. Made quite a good impression, uh, even though the team was uh, relegated. And he played uh, in England before that because he was born in England. Uh, his kind of English name is Brereton and his uh, Chilean name is Diaz. And now he goes by Ben Brereton Diaz. He was actually... Uh, uh, part of the squad in the 2021 Copa America, making a big splash there, actually. He subbed into game one and then gained a starting position uh, after that and was quite good. Uh, and since the beginning of 2024, he's become more important to Chile, starting eight of their 12 games and subbing in for the four others. So uh, a definite candidate here. And again, one of the few stable positions on the squad. However, we do have uh, backup candidates here. First one, Victor de Villa, who's 26 years old and has been with Chile since 2018, but only nine caps and uh, one goal in that time. Uh, he was injured for the 2019 Copa America and not selected for the 2021 edition. Um, 
And uh, recently he returned after a year-long injury at the beginning of this period in March 2023 and did start four of their remaining 12 games, as well as subbing in for three and on the bench for three. Uh, not selected for two matches, but I believe he was uh, selected for um, uh, uh, under the new manager. He plays for Setska Moscow uh, in Russia. That's the second player we've seen uh, uh, playing for CSK Moscow in Russia. He's been with them since 2023 and was with Mexican teams uh, for quite a while before that. Next, our next likely candidate is Alexander Aravina. And he is 21 years old, uh, just with the team since 2023, but has nine caps in that time. He plays in, uh, in Chile for Universidad Católica. And he got his first cap there at the beginning of the period in March 2023 and started three of their games, as well as subbing in for six and being on the bench for three others. And the only reason I don't have him as a definite candidate uh, is just because of the managerial changes. He's always been selected, but uh, will be kind of a new, uh, new for the manager uh, and is only 21 years old, so may, may not have proven himself. So those are uh, just some of the considerations we think about and we weren't confident enough to put him as a definite candidate. Anyway, things looking good for uh, the young Alexander Aravina and we do have him as a likely candidate. Let's summarize the position. So as we said, it could be left wing or left attacking midfield or left forward. Regardless, it is primarily Brereton in this position. Uh, yes, let's move on from there. Uh, no, I, I, I just I want to just make sure he was he was there. Uh, in the last two games. No, in the last two games, it was uh, Davia. I think I started writing that in my notes and then uh, forgot to finish it. So it was uh, Davia in the last two games. Um, and uh, Brereton was uh, not on the field. I think um, he was a substitute. Yes, he would have been a substitute. Okay, so... Um, uh, yes, it could be that a, a change is, uh, is underway there. Okay, let's look at the right attacking side of the field or quadrant of the field. And here we have a, a likely candidate in uh, Dario Osorio, uh, or who at least was likely until uh, an injury concern hit him. So he's very young, just 20 years old, uh, but with the team since 2022 and eight caps and one goal. He plays for Mittiland in Denmark since 2023, and that's his first club after moving from Chile. Uh, got his first appearance on the bench, uh, sorry, in 2022, and started two of their 12 games over the period we're looking at. Subbed in for three, on the bench for three, and uh, not selected for three matches since the beginning of the uh, near the beginning of the period so uh, has uh, kind of worked his way into the squad he was injured uh, for one two however unfortunately um he is out with a lower leg fracture he uh, got that injury in late may and uh, the only club game he missed was the last game of the season. Now, they say he uh, is expected back on June 7th, but that doesn't seem in line with a lower leg fracture as the injury is described. So again, uh, I'm, I'm finding the prediction uh, seemingly more hopeful than realistic. Anyway, we will have to up update on uh, Dario Osorio, but that is quite... Uh, unfortunate since the new manager did pick him uh, for the last two games which we'll talk about more when we get to the summary in fact i haven't even introduced the candidates here so uh, in addition to the likely candidate dario osorio uh, we have diego valdez as the first of four possible candidates marcos bolados christian zavala uh, oh, okay, just three candidates at the portable level. We have uh, Maximil uh, Maximiliano Guerrero as a portable but unlikely candidate. He got his first cap in November uh, 2023, uh, subbing into a game, and he was on the bench for the other one 
uh, but not selected uh, for the two matches under the new manager. So again, because he's a new candidate, we think uh, that will reduce his chances of, of selection. And we have one who's seemingly off the squad, and that is uh, uh, Joaquin uh, Montesinos. Uh, Joaquin Montesinos, uh, who last appeared in November of 2022, so uh, doesn't seem a consideration. He only has, uh, uh, oh, he has 11 caps since 2021, um, but uh, seems to be off the squad regardless. Okay, let's uh, move back and talk about the uh, candidates that we do expect to see. Uh, so um, probably it'll be one of these guys, uh, or maybe it'll be one of these guys stepping into Osorio's position, who I just will be out injured. Uh, Diego Valdez is 30 years old and has 30 caps for the national team since 2015. Uh, was selected for the 2019 Copa America, but not the 2021. Uh, however, over the past uh, uh, year and a bit, he has started six of their 12 games, uh, subbed in for two, but he wasn't selected for the last four matches. So that includes the two under the new manager. Um, next, Marcos Bolados, uh, 28 years old, but only six caps for the national team since 2018. Does have two goals, mind you, and plays for Colo Colo in Chile. I forgot to say that Diego Valdez plays for Club America in Mexico and has played for uh, teams in Mexico since 2016. Marcos Bolados, though, has played in Chile for his whole career. He was actually uh, on the preliminary squad way back in the 2016 Copa America Centenario, but ultimately has never um, uh, been selected for a tournament. Uh, over the past year and a bit, he started one of their uh, 11 games after coming back from a four and a half year absence. Uh, started one and subbed in. Uh, subbed into the last two games, which is positive uh, under the new manager. He's also on the bench for four games. So Marcos Balados uh, seems to be favored by the new manager here, and we'll have to see um, how that goes for him. Our final uh, possible candidate is Christian Zavala. And he is um, 25 years old and uh, been with Chile since 2021 with three caps. He plays for Colo Colo in Chile and uh, came back after a more than uh, two year absence in, in March of 2024. Uh, didn't start either of their remaining games, but was subbed in for one and on the bench for one. So in terms of recency bias, uh, Bolados and Zavala uh, look the most possible, but in terms of experience, uh, Diego Valdez um, uh, would maybe be favoured. And then uh, Dario Asori obviously was favoured starting the last two games, but out with uh, an injury. And I think I just uh, uh, did the summary there. But I, I will uh, uh, t uh, do the summary again. So as on the uh, left side, it could be right winger, right attacking midfielder, or right forward in a 4-3-3. Uh, but for Chile, usually a right attacking midfielder. And uh, a variety of players in this position in the first half. But actually, Diego Valdez had the most starts uh, at, uh, uh, at that time. In the second half, too, it was a lot of players coming into the position. Four different candidates over the last six games. But uh, as we saw, the new manager seemed to land on Osorio there for the last two games. So he'll be particularly uh, upset that uh, Osorio is now no longer an option, if that's indeed the case. Um, again, he is expected back on June 7th. Uh, but if Osorio is not available, the position becomes very open again. I suppose Valdez having a slight uh, edge, although he hasn't been selected recently. Okay, let's move on to central attackers. And um, we have... Uh, 
uh, Arturo Vidal, who is actually coded as a central midfielder, but uh, he has been playing in this position uh, more, and he is a possible candidate. And then Lucas Asadi, also a possible candidate. We have two players who seem to be off the squad. One is a, a quite sad story, uh, uh, Javier Altamirano, who... Um, um, I just want to see how close he was to uh, the national team before uh, telling his story. He got his first cap in June of 2023 and started one of their remaining games. Uh, but he had been struggling with injuries, so he was out for uh, um, uh, basically after that uh, one appearance. So uh, um, was not a good candidate anyway. Anyway, he had a epileptic seizure on the field in March. Uh, he's just um, 20 years old. So uh, quite a sad story there. I hope we can talk about him as a player uh, sometime in the future. But uh, he is still uh, uh, out with that and possibly other injuries. Um, I'm not sure if that was March 2023 or 2024. Uh, but as I say, I hope he will be uh, someone we can talk about down the road. The other player seemingly off the squad is Pablo Para. Uh, just four caps for the national team and uh, last appeared in March 2022. So always a bit of a, uh, a fringe player, although young enough uh, to return. To, uh, he's 30 years old. So yeah, always a fringe player. Uh, let's go back and look at the two candidates at the possible level. We have uh, Arturo Vidal, and he is uh, part of the Golden Generation 2, uh, 37 years old now, with 142 caps and 34 goals since 2007. And uh, from the World Cup in 2010, at the start of their glory years, he was there and uh, one of the kind of iconic players of that team and remained with the team all the way up to the 2021 Copa America, where he was a starter. And um, he started two of their, uh, sorry, started four of their 12 games since the start of 2023, uh, subbed in for one and injured for three. Uh, but he was not selected for three games, including the last two matches. So I think I made a false promise uh, at the beginning. My impression was he was kind of uh, bringing back this golden generation. But as I say, it seems that anyone, any one of them who remained with the team uh, uh, was not selected uh, under him. So Arturo Vidal uh, moves down to a possible candidate uh, because of that, not, not being selected under the new manager. Lucas Afadi, I'm sorry, I should say that uh, uh, Vidal is back playing in Chile, uh, his second stint with Colo Colo since 2024. Uh, actually, he had been back in South America with a couple of Brazilian teams, but what a resume for this guy. Uh, Inter Milan, Barcelona and Spain and Juventus. And Bayer Leverkusen from 2007 uh, to 2022, quite something, uh, Arturo Vidal. Uh, sadly, though, just a possible candidate. Okay, Lucas Asadi uh, is just 20 years old, uh, with Chile since 2022, with two caps, and plays for uh, plays in Chile. He got his first appearance in uh, 2022, at the end of 2022, uh, and um, was uh, subbed in for one game and on the bench for three. Uh, but uh, that does include the last two. So he wasn't selected for eight games, but he was selected under the new manager, uh, Lucas Asadi. And uh, if, if that is indicative, that would put him ahead of, our, our, uh, of Arturo Vidal in the uh, pecking order. But I do have a bit of trouble uh, believing that, so I'm not fully convinced that the new manager selection uh, will necessarily be the final squad. Okay, we'll summarize the position of central attacking uh, midfielder. In fact, the position is used quite often in their favoured 4-2-3-1 formation. Uh, Vidal was there in the first half of the period, and then forward Alexis Sanchez was there in three of the last four games. Um, uh, including under the new manager. 
Okay, let's move on to the uh, forward line. We don't have any secondary strikers, so just the position of forward to deal with here. Let's look at our first forward. Then actually Brereton, uh, uh, Ben Brereton Diaz was listed as a forward, but we moved him to a uh, left attacking position there. So we have uh, uh, Alexis Sanchez, who despite uh, moving to an attacking midfield in the last couple of games, we still are uh, viewing him as a forward. So he is a uh, definite candidate. And... Um, Eduardo Vargas uh, as a possible candidate. And then uh, we'll deal with the uh, less likely candidates here. We have quite a few of them, so I'll make it uh, fast. Diego Rubio, uh, possible but unlikely. Um, he only has 12 caps for the national team since 2011, so uh, uh, never really got in uh, with the squad and actually was... Uh, uh, not selected for any tournaments. He he uh, was off the team for seven years. He came back 2018. Might have been off it again for a period after that. Um, but since the start of 2022, he started the first of their games and was on the bench for one um, and not selected for the last four matches. So Diego Rubio continuing to struggle to get onto the squad. We have uh, Damian uh, Pizarro, uh, Pizarro. Uh, as a player seemingly off the squad. Uh, he's very young, just um, 19 years old, and um, got his first cap in November 22, uh, 2022. Um, sorry, that must be November 2023. Started one of their remaining four games, um, but were not selected for the last three matches and not selected under the new manager uh, either. Uh, also uh, on the uh, seemingly off the squad is Philippe Mora. He has nine caps for the national team, but he was selected for the 2021 uh, Copa America, but um, uh, was off the team after that. He came back after a two-year absence in October 2023 and was around for a little bit, but uh, um, uh, just uh, on the bench for one and subbed in for... Uh, none. Okay, so it looks like just a bench appearance there and uh, not selected for four matches. Uh, Philippe Mora. Uh, Bruno uh, Barticiotti, uh, seemingly off the squad. Um, first appearance on the bench in March 2023 and did start a game uh, and was on the bench for three games, but he was out with two separate injuries for four games, including the last two matches there and also not selected for four others. So slim chance of getting onto the team, I suppose not impossible though. Uh, Max, uh, Ma uh, Maximiliano Rodriguez, um, his first and only appearance uh, was in June of 2023. Um, uh, Angelo Enriquez, uh, currently playing in Russia, uh, only 14 caps for the national team since 2012. Uh, and um, uh, last appeared for the team in September 2022, Enriquez. And finally, uh, Diego Valencia uh, was selected for the 2021 Copa America squad, but has not uh, appeared for the team since November 2022. So all of those players, uh, you know, with uh, some potential, a, sli a slight chance of making the team um, not completely off the team is what I should say, but uh, don't seem uh, like candidates here. Let's go back to the ones who do, uh, beginning with Alexis Sanchez, 35 years old and uh, 161 caps and 50 goals uh, in his career with Chile, which began in 2006. And they're uh, still playing for Inter Milan in Spain since, uh, sorry, in Italy since 2020 and was with Manchester United uh, before that, uh, as well as Arsenal and Barcelona. So not only a, a great club career there, but um, uh, really uh, one, of the, one of the faces of their glory years. Uh, so uh, we could go through his tournaments and spend a, a long time on that, but we won't. He was uh, 
Um, his first tournament was the 2010 World Cup where their glory years began. By the time of the 2021 Copa America, he was actually looking um, uh, a little old, but he also was uh, struggling with injury in that game. He only appeared uh, in, in one game there. But uh, I think he, he kind of has revitalized a bit. And in this period, he started eight of their 12 games, as well as subbing in for two. So missed one match through injury and one through non-selection. So Alexis Sanchez is uh, still going strong uh, here and a definite candidate to make the squad. Um, the possible candidate, Eduardo Vargas, also a part of that golden generation, although he came along a little bit later. He's uh, 34 years old and has 180, uh, sorry, 108 caps and 41 goals since uh, 2009. And he plays for Atletico Mineiro in uh, Brazil and was with uh, in Mexico, Germany and, uh, and uh, uh, Italy and Spain before that. So quite a traveled player. Uh, Eduardo Vargas, though, uh, uh, he was a starter in the 2021 Copa America, and, uh, but off the team after that, but returned after a two-year absence in March of 2024 and started both of their remaining games. So uh, uh, he was one of the players I had in mind when I talked about the manager bringing back uh, some of these golden generation players uh, from out of the wilderness. Um, so Eduardo Vargas, a possible candidate. Okay, so those are really the only two viable candidates, Vargas and Sanchez, both from the golden generation. And let's summarize the position. So sometimes the forward position is one-man position and sometimes a two-man position. Uh, again, uh, quite messy at the beginning, even though some of those games were friendlies. Seven different players got the start over the first five games. Uh, it settled down somewhat uh, into Sanchez, uh, although when he was accompanied by a player in a two-man uh, forward line, it was always uh, a different player who accompanied him. Then towards the end of the period, he moved back to the uh, attacking midfielder, uh, central attacking midfielder role towards the end, and Eduardo Vargas started in the last two games. Uh, so again, we, we kind of see that as a move to uh, stabilize the squad. Okay, that is it. Wow, a lot of players for uh, Chile uh, that we have gone through. And now we're going to go through them all, race through them again uh, to try to nominate starters for the position. So we'll say that Ricardo Gareca, the manager, um, uh, will regard him as a starter. Uh, we don't think they'll change uh, that um, after all the upheaval they've gone through. Um, the goalkeeping situation is quite interesting. So we saw that uh, Claudio Bravo came in after being off the squad, uh, kind of a punishment, I'm guessing, from the FA uh, for not uh, respond or not um agreeing to a call-up for some friendly games in June. So off the squad for a while, and Brian Cortez took over. However, uh, he was back for the two games in March of 2024 and uh, could well be the starter. He was a starter in those two games. But we're not sure in general if these uh, changes under the new manager uh, are going to stick or whether he you know, will, will uh, reconsider. Um, so we're not going to nominate a starter for them, but uh, among the among the goalkeepers, it would be Cortez or Bravo, and I think uh, probably more likely Bravo, uh, even though he is 41 years old. Uh, okay, the central defenders. Um, again, it was kind of a mix and match of players, but for the last two games, the manager settled on Paulo Diaz and on. Um, the possible candidate, Igor uh, Lichnovsky. Lich so I'm fairly confident Diaz will be uh, a starter, especially since one of his competitors, Guillermo Marapan, is probably, uh, uh, or, or is an injury doubt. We'll talk about that later. 
and uh, Gary Medell is um, what selected for the last two games. However, we're not confident enough to say that Li uh, Li uh, Lichnowski will be the starter because he was kind of on the outskirts of the squad prior to those March 2024 games. One of the few stable positions in the squad is uh, Gabriel Suazo as the left back. So uh, we can confidently nominate him as the starter uh, a newcomer without any tournament experience there. Uh, but on the right side, it's far less clear. Uh, one of the most unstable positions on the squad did look like uh, Juan Delgado uh, was um, heading towards maybe being the, the uh, starter, but then uh, he was injured in October and uh, um, things have been kind of unclear after that. However, in the last two games, uh, it was um, veteran Mauricio uh, Isla uh, brought back in, uh, brought back in from the cold to uh, play, and um, um, one of the uh, one of the veterans of the golden generation there. So the manager might stick with that in order to bring stability to the squad. Uh, next in the uh, defensive midfield, defensive and central midfield uh, end. Um, the manager um, eventually landed on Nunes and uh, Echeverria. Uh, both of those had started quite a few games, so I think uh, we can reasonably confidently uh, nominate them as starters. Echeverria uh, coded as a defensive midfield and Marcelino Nunes as a central midfield, although he does start in other positions sometimes and uh, 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 only a few times started as a defensive midfielder, but was there in the last two games. And um, it is possible that uh, experienced players like Charles Aranguis and uh, Pulgar could come back into the position. So um, we're not that confident about that one. Uh, moving upfield to uh, the attacking midfield, we look at the left attacking side of the field. We definitely would have uh, put Bre uh, Ben Brereton uh, uh, as the uh, starting left attacking player. However, for the last two games, the manager went with Victor Davila. So I'm sure it'll be one of those. Uh, Brereton is in good form. So um, I'm surprised that he's been off the squad for the last two games. He was uh, selected, though, and subbed into those games. But um, we can't uh, confidently nominate him as a starter because he didn't start the last two games. So either him or Dabia, though, uh, maybe I'll mark that in blue as uh, one or the other uh, because um, they really don't seem uh, many candidates beyond uh, uh, beyond them. And uh, uh, Aravina, I don't think I mentioned this during the main podcast, he's coded as a left winger, but uh, uh, his three starts were all in different positions as a left attacking midfielder, a right winger, and a right forward. So um, uh, he hasn't really made a bid for the position. Uh, on the right attacking side of the field, the manager seemed to go with uh, Dario Osorio, but he has a uh, an injury, which we'll talk about soon. Um, and I don't think he's going to be available. Uh, so they will have to find someone else uh, over there. And uh, really, there's no candidate uh, really raising their hand. Perhaps Diego Valdez, uh, although he wasn't selected for the last uh, um, four games. Central attacking uh, midfielder. Uh, well... Uh, it looks like the most likely candidate here is the forward, Alexis Sanchez. So uh, none of the candidates that we went through, uh, even Arturo Vidal, uh, looks like a candidate because v Vidal was not selected for the last two matches. So uh, we're going to nominate Alexis Sanchez as a starter, uh, whether he starts as an attacking midfielder, as he uh, has recently or whether he starts as a forward, as he did in the first part of the period. Uh, we think he'll be a starter. <laughs> Excuse me. We think he will be a starter uh, anyway. 
And uh, finally, Eduardo Vargas. Um, if Alexis Sanchez is a central attacking midfielder, then Eduardo Vargas uh, looks like he would be the starting forward. However, uh, he came out of the cold, came out of the wilderness and selected by the new manager um, to uh, start the last two games there. So that's not long enough to give us confidence that he will be uh, the man. So there we go. Um, the manager... Uh, coming in in January 2024, so a little difficult to predict given the changes that have occurred uh, under uh, Garaka there. Okay, the uh, next order of business is, uh, oh, I was supposed to do closing thoughts, but I think I covered that uh, in the review of the starters, basically uh, what I just said. A lot of changes, a lot of players coming in and out, and uh, Gareca seemingly trying to stabilize things, um, but perhaps not as much as I thought at the beginning of this uh, uh, media cast, and we'll really have to look to the June games to see if the changes he made in March are the changes he will go with uh, in the friendlies and in the cup. Uh, okay, well, let's uh, go to review of the um, uh, injuries, so there are a few. Uh, the player the manager seemed to favor as a right forward or right attacker, Dario Osorio, is out with a leg fracture uh, since late May, a lower leg fracture. Uh, he missed only the last game of the season and is expected back on June 7th, but that doesn't seem logical. Uh, that he would be back so quickly. So I suspect June 7th is a bit of a, a hopeful date. I will put him in the expected back uh, uh, category, but, but um, uh, I'm a bit doubtful there. Also expected back is Guillermo Maripan, the central defender. Uh, he was out with a hamstring injury, also fairly recent since mid-May, but expected to return on May 31st. Hamstring injuries can go one way or the other. They can be long-term, but we have sometimes seen players recover uh, quickly from them if they're not uh, maybe a full uh, a full-on hamstring injury. So um, perhaps he'll be back on May 31st, uh, as they say. But um, again, I'm a bit skeptical there too. Uh, uh, I would uh, maybe put him, uh, I'm going to put him as a close call here. Um, uh, okay. Uh, out of contention though is Cesar Fuentes, in addition to not really being uh, a part of the squad much um, uh, and not being selected much. He's uh, got a cruciate ligament tear and is out until October. So uh, absolutely out of the question there. And uh, players injured with an unknown return date. Um, uh, one, uh, Guel, uh, one Delgado, who seemed to be making a good bid as a starter, uh, but then got a hip injury in October of 2023 and has still not come back into action uh, and has an unknown return date. So uh, very doubtful there because uh, he would need some time to bring up his fitness. And finally, the young uh, Javier Altimari uh, Altimarano actually didn't look like he had made much inroad uh, into the squad, but a sad story in that he suffered an epileptic seizure uh, on the field and uh, has been out since then. So um, uh, not a candidate really for the squad, uh, although it is written that he has an unknown return date. So those are the injuries. We'll update them when we get to part two, if we get more uh, information. And speaking of part two, we will do that when the squads are released and we know what the final squad is. And um, our main order of business will be to go back over the list that we've created here. We look for any notable non-selections, so players we expected to be part of the squad who were not selected, and then any surprise inclusions, including new players who uh, we didn't expect to be included, but who are. Finally, we'll give an update on injuries 
uh, the injuries we just talked about. So uh, we hope this um, part one prepares you nicely so that you can enjoy uh, watching Chile on the field that much more, knowing who's who. And then we hope you also return for part two to find out to find out who's who, because uh, uh, we don't know which of these players are going to make it at this point. Uh, see you then. We would like to thank Paul Udin and Pixabay for the wonderful background music accompanying this media cast. The piece is called Victory Epic Music.